several tests we can do to check for asthma. We've talked about our peak flows and our spirometers, but there's also a test that checks for something called nitric oxide. Now, nitric oxide is produced by eosinophils, which are an immune system cell found in your airways. Now, if they are active, which means your immune system is active, they produce this nitric oxide chemical, which is a messenger that communicates between all of the immune system cells. So if you have an allergic reaction, for example, these guys kick into action and start producing nitric oxide. So I have a question for you. Why are active eosinophils important for asthmatics? So the answer to the question is that asthma is an inflammatory disease, which means it's triggered by the immune system. So if someone comes across an allergen like dog hair, that could trigger the immune system to become active, and that would trigger a series of events that would lead to an actual asthma attack. And in that whole kind of process that leads to the asthma attack, a cinephil would start to produce the nitric oxide to try and coordinate this immune response. So if I do the test and I have a higher a nitric oxide level, that could indicate that my lungs are actually being prepared for an asthma attack or they're very prone to an asthma attack. So what I need you to do is empty your lungs, put your lips around here, take a deep breath in through the mouthpiece and then breathe out slowly at a rate of 50 millilitres per second. Now you probably don't know what that is, but we've got a smiley face which I get to see and a sound beep beep beep, it's too fast, beep beep beep, it's too slow, you want a continuous tone, beep. And if you get that tone, then um, uh, keep blowing, it's about 10 seconds. Okay. It's 8 quid a blow, so you try and get it right first time. Uh, so it measures a chemical messenger signaling to cells called ears and fills and other inflammatory cells in your lungs. Hopefully it'll be nice and low in you, but it's sometimes upset by a, a big fry up. Okay. Okay. So empty your lungs to the side, put your lips around the mouthpiece, and deep breath in. Breathe right in. And when you're ready, blow out slowly. Slowly. Slightly faster. That's it. Keep that tone going for another five or six seconds. Perfect, you managed to get it first time, so we get a smiley cloud face. Nice. It's going to, uh, it's got a canister in there which has got all sorts of gases and it will um, calculate your exhaled nitric oxide over the next two minutes. Twenty-seven parts per billion. Top. Now, the upper limit of normal would be about 25, but don't panic. Um, it can be affected by all sorts of things you might have ingested, sure. such as lots of meat last night if you had a good burger or something. Spank and sandwich this morning. This morning, okay, yeah. so that has slightly tipped it up. So if we were doing this really professionally, we would have asked you um, what's to have the um, bacon butty. As you can see, my reading was just very slightly above the accepted range. Now again, Dr. Hinks assured me I had nothing to worry about because if you listen to his instructions, he said that having uh, meat in a meal could actually influence the results. And on the way to that test, I actually had a bacon sandwich on the way to the, on the train, on the way to the actual meeting. So that actually influenced my results and I have nothing to worry about. My eosinophils are all asleep. <laughs>